Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back to the channel. Now, if there's one thing you can pretty much guarantee that happens to any owner of an EV within one, maybe two hours of ordering the car, let alone taking uh, ownership of it, it's that you become semi-obsessed with energy and efficiency. How much electricity are you using? How much gas are you using? A solar panel is a good idea. How about home batteries? If it wasn't in your head before, when you get an EV, it definitely will be. I have never had a discussion about electricity tariffs, solar panels or home batteries with my brother before, but since he also got an EV, half our discussions are typically about energy, which is cool, but it just proves my point. And you'll be recognizing yourself in this, it does become a semi-obsession. On that obsession, I managed to borrow one of these little things, which is really cool. It's a Fleur One thermal imaging camera. Basically, you can get one from Octopus Energy for free, just for one week. Uh, I think you have to be one of their customers, um, just by applying for it. It took about ooh, six, seven, eight weeks before it arrived, because obviously there's a waiting list. But the idea behind it is that you point it at your house, you point it at the outside, the inside of your house, and then try and find any black spots or, or blue spots, in my case, uh, where the heat is disappearing out of your house, where there's no insulation, where there's a, a draft you didn't know existed. And it just literally plugs in to the bottom of your phone and becomes a camera. You use the app and, and that's pretty much it. It's a thermal imaging camera, simple as that. I found some black spots and uh, I thought it'd be quite interesting to show you what I've seen because I honestly thought that I had a very insulated house and it wouldn't pick anything up and uh, it, it's just a bit of fun but I've actually found a significant hole in my insulation, which hopefully I now have plugged. One cool thing you can do with this actually is that you can turn it into what I call predator mode. So it changes the color scheme. Uh, and then you can do things like this. Now, of course, because my wife has, for some reason, never seen Predator, and my daughter's only nine, me going, get to the chopper! Whilst I was you know, kind of pointing this in the face, it just, pff, pff, nothing, nothing at all. But as I said, it's not just a toy. Um, so let me show you a room. This room, in fact. As you can see here, I think, it's basically we're kind of semi in the uh, roof space. It's a Velux window there, and the top of the house is kind of like that. So there is roof space, there is a loft, um, but we are kind of half in the apex. And at the corner here, I'll, I'll put the picture up now, you can clearly see this massive dark band where I'm losing quite a bit of heat. It even goes past the light fitting. So that's probably a good foot and a half from the, uh, the corner there where, where, where the roof starts to taper down, this, this roof here. Now that runs all along this side of the house in another few rooms and along the other side of the apex along the other side of those rooms as well so there's effectively uh, about five or six rooms or something like that if you if you include the hall that are affected by this big gap it goes all the way along and all the way back there is a metal beam in about that location so there's bound to be some heat loss with just the fact there's a, there's a metal girder there uh, but when i went up in the loft i discovered why it looks like when all this was boarded, and there's lots of insulation underneath, um, the extra was put into that side of the house, but none was put down there. So you can see down here, there's, no, oh, there's nothing there. Um, so I've just started to put all these little kind of gaps with more insulation. So, so that's one thing that it's picked up on, which I can solve now. Yeah, that was a, a, a fun hour or two, uh, creeping along in a place that you can't stand up in on the uh, beams, making sure you don't go through the ceiling. Uh, so yeah, I, I've plugged the gap. You can see there we had a ton of insulation left over because when we moved into this house, there was only about that much. So we just bought a load of insulation and, and kind of overdid it, if I'm honest. So we had plenty of spare, thankfully in this case, so we didn't have to go out and buy any more and, and plugged the gaps, as it were, along all of these rooms. Like I said, there's probably about six areas of the house that were affected by this. Uh, and this is what it looks like after I've done it. Yes, there's still a blue bar there, but that, that's more than likely the metal girder. There's nothing you can do about that. It's metal, it's gonna be very cold. Um, but you, you can sort of make out the light fitting. So 
I've gained about over a foot of insulation of, of, of no loss of heat and that's just in this room if I look at how that's probably about what, six seven foot and then if I look at all the other rooms and add up the amount of square footage that effectively have no insulation in it I reckon we're looking at ooh, 40 to 50 square foot of uninsulated roof space that's like having what one two rooms depending on the size of them with no insulation above them that's that's going to be a serious heat loss and ultimately heat loss decreases efficiency and less efficiency means i'm paying out more money than i need to as a yorkshireman i'm dead set against that so straight away for me this little thing has paid for itself even though i didn't actually pay anything to uh, to, to get it but you get my point it's already become a benefit now I won't bother showing you the rest of the house. Uh, this is the outside, for example. It's, it's, it's actually not bad at all. It's what I would expect. But you might be able to tell from that that uh, we obviously have garages underneath. It's a three-story house um, and uh, the house is effectively on top of those garages. Now, I've always known this. It's, it's been obvious because there are gaps at the top and bottom of the, well, at the top certainly, of the doors themselves. But if I show you this picture, <laughs> there's a massive, massive amount of heat loss flooding out of both of those garages underneath my house. Now, yes, there's insulation between the first floor and the ground floor, the garages effectively, so that's gonna stop some of the heat loss there. Um, but there's also a staircase leading down and another door granted, but ultimately heat is gonna be drawn from underneath i'm going to be losing heat underneath the house i suppose into the garages and then straight out of them garage doors these it, the mats will be black them doors on this picture they're losing so much heat so clearly i need to do something about that i i, I knew it before and it was blatantly obvious because when you go in there it's freezing in winter it does have the benefit of being really comfortable in summer <laughs> because the back of the house where where there's, we've got another room behind the garage that's kind of a, like a basement that the, the land does that so the back of the house is only two story, the front is three. Um, so it's really comfortable in summer, but in winter it's freezing and there has to be a significant heat loss, I guess, even with insulation between the floors from the house. So I need to do something about that. As I said, I knew about it, but now this is really highlighted to me that this needs sorting out. Fortunately, it's not gonna be a cheap job. I mean, in my head, the one that the, 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 the car goes in, what we call the car garage, then that has to be a door. So a, a proper insulated garage door that, that maybe comes up, not an up and over, what do they call it, like a sectional door, that's probably the best thing. It'll be sealed all round and it'll be sort of insulated and it's probably as good as you're gonna get. This is where I need your help. If anybody out there knows of a really insulated door that's not immensely expensive anyway, uh, garage door, sorry, then, then, then please do let me know. I've had a usual Google around and I'm not sure how well insulated these insulated garage doors are. So if there's any experts out there, please uh, please do let me know that, that will be handy. For the other garage, um, which is kind of just a storeroom really, it's, it, it, you can't really fit a car in it, it's one of those. It's probably gonna be best just to brick it up and put a window in and just create, in, create a room from it really. Even if it stays as a storeroom, it will mean that the heat loss will disappear overnight. Straight away, this has, has clearly proved itself. So I will put in the description below a link to the Octopus uh, uh, page, I suppose, where you uh, where you say, can I have one of these, please? They do one for iOS and Android, so you don't have to have an, uh, an iPhone. I wouldn't have known about this, these gaps in my insulation. And that, uh, it's hard to quantify how much that would have possibly cost, but having all that square footage with no insulation, We've got to be into what five percent increase of heat bills over over a year. I don't know. Maybe someone with more knowledge on this can can help me out on that one. But ultimately, it's it's done its job as this. Now, if you're wondering why I'm with Octopus, then I will put a link also in the description below to a video I did a while ago now, which basically proved with statistics and facts that Octopus are the cheapest any electricity company energy tariff for an EV driver. Um, so go and have a look at that because you get other little benefits from Octopus like this as well. And there's also a referral link there. So if you do join them, I get £50, you get £50 and we both win out. 
Okay, that's pretty much it really. Um, I think I need to send that back now. It'd be nice to go and have a look around at everyone else's house and see see where they're losing it. Especially if you've got an old one. I imagine this would be really handy if you've got like a an old Victorian house. I think when you see it in front of you there, it really makes you think, I've got to do something about that. You always know it's there, but you need something like this shoved in your face sometimes so you actually do anything about it. As I said earlier, uh, any garage door um, geniuses or companies or just people who know lots about them, if you've got any recommendations for what is a nicely insulated and not a mega expensive garage door, then please do uh, send me a few links or whatever. Uh, I'd be interested to know that so I can try and plug a few holes downstairs. Energy efficiency might not equal how much it costs me for the garage door. I might not save what the garage door is costing for 20 years, but ultimately I do want to kind of stop that from happening. This has made me, it's going to eat away now until they do something about it. And I can't afford to do anything about it. <laughs> so it's going to eat away at me for a while. In the next week too, I'll be doing another video about the house and uh, saving energy because it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of all related to EV stuff. Even though this is an electric vehicle channel, it's spread out a little bit, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of radiator and smart thermostats. So uh, keep an eye out for that one because I genuinely think that you will be interested in that because it does save me quite a wedge of money actually does this system. Now I've had it in for quite a while. So uh, yeah, that's something to look forward to, I'm sure. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments whether or not you've done this, whether it's through Octopus or anything else. Has it saved you money? I know a few people I've spoken to have said that they had a bare window and that was just a, a huge heat sink. They never knew anything about until they got this and then that's, that's, that's now been plugged, that, that hole is gone now. This is exactly what energy companies should be doing. Be proactive in saving people energy, not just charging them silly amounts for it in the first place. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you as always for watching. Please, please, please do subscribe. It helps and uh, I'll see you soon.